that, let us get started here. Word. Alrighty, so welcome to the Spiral Series Highlight Reel. Oh shoot, let me change this marquee. <laughs> I didn't prepare this as easily as I thought I would. Um, thank you for coming, uh, viewing us here. Uh, I'm joined by my guest, Arcade in the Boxes, said 3S. What's going on? Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, Mr. Said 3S. Uh, shoot, um, I've been in the scene, well, competitively since like around 2005, I think, something like that. Started going to random tournaments here in Tucson, and they weren't, uh, they weren't what they are now. I mean, it was, it was really small amounts of people. I know that there was a scene in Tucson like before I got into it, like older, older, like in the 90s and stuff, but I don't know many uh, of those people. I know Jeff actually used to live in Tucson, and I think he was part of that scene way back in the OGA. Jeff day. did? Yeah. Really? I didn't know that. Yep. That's pretty cool. Um, but uh, other than that, I started going to like Phoenix and stuff for tournaments in like 2006, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's, I'm old, and there's a lot of years. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. So... I think like 2006 or so, and uh, starting with like Devastation and stuff, and that's when I met um, Scott and Rick and you know all those other guys who who are in the in the scene. And um, the scene here in Tucson, like I said, was was pretty small for the most part. Um, but I kind of it was kinda, it was pretty much around it was like around 2004 that I really started playing Street Fighter like seriously, like. Halo 1 was what I had played, like, a lot of, you know, it was what I was really competitive at, like, when it was, when it was big, and then it came out, and then Halo 2 came out, and I hated that game. So, <laughs> had to, had to find 2. something else to keep the competitive fire, you know, and, okay, uh, sure. started playing that, it was mostly just online, I was just an online warrior or whatever, and, uh, mostly just played, and when Anniversary Collection came out around, like, January 2004, and just played mostly, like, ST and stuff, but, oh, wow. Um, just like a lot of the world, uh, the, the, the Diago Perry video came out and, uh, <laughs> I fell in love with third strike, man. I, I mean, I, I know it was, it was big in places like California and Japan before that, but that's when I really was like, oh my God, like I have to play this game. And, okay. uh, that became my love, started playing that game, uh, had some people start playing it here with me, uh, mostly Rockus, uh, Marvin, uh, Matt, uh, Blarin, some of those guys. We were like the core. Uh, Sean, Sean, when Sean lived in Tucson, Sean, we were like, okay. yeah, we were like the core of the Tucson fighting game scene at the time or whatever. And then four came out, and other people started joining, and the rest is kind of history. It's how it's been. So very cool. One one but, interesting fact I've heard about you over the years is you actually drove a lot to to and from California to go to their tournaments. <laughs> yeah. Um, I lo I love Third Strike. I mean, I st I still do. It's a it's an amazing game. It's probably my favorite fighting game. I know a lot of the, I mean, I I started with ST, but I and I know a lot of the older guys. They don't consider it really Third Strike. Or I'm sorry, excuse me. They don't really consider it Street Fighter because of the parry system. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it basically nullifies a lot of the, a lot of the Street Fighter, the original Street Fighter mechanics like fireballs. I mean, it's there's basically no fireball yeah, game. Pretty much, <laughs> but. Yes, I loved the game, so I used to, I would drive, for one, one of their seasons, I drove from here to there every weekend uh, that they had their Rambat seasons go on, um, just to compete with those guys in, uh, at the time it was at Dengen Arcade. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think Rock came with me for one of them, but for like three or four of them, I was driving by myself, and it would be like a one day thing, like I would drive up on Saturday, uh, I would compete in the tournament, hang out, chill with guys, chill with the guys, and then when the arcade closed around like midnight, I would head back home and then get back at like 6 in the morning, and it was, it was awful. <laughs> yeah, which arcade was this at? Dengen. Dengen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. That's when the third strike scene was biggest over there, so. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just love the game, you know, and those guys are some of my, uh, my better friends, and they, they were a lot of the reasons that I had learned to play the game, you know, those guys were the best in the country at the time, so. Very um, cool. A lot of them are still my friends to this day. So, so now nowadays you've picked up uh, some of the newer gen games, I guess. Like, uh, what's what's the new game you're you're sitting on right now that you really like? Um, I mean, it's cross Tekken is what I play. Um, I started playing Street Fighter Four reluctantly 
<laughs> I, was, I really didn't want to let go of the older games, man. N none of us really did in, in Tucson in general. Just, just did not like Street Fighter Four. Not a big fan. You know, it, it's I mean, a matter of opinion, whatever. But uh, just not a big fan of the game. But the competitive fire kind of took over, and I, I just needed to compete. You know, and mm -hmm. uh, I was tired of seeing Phoenix just loom over us and stuff. And so, <laughs> helped grow the community here, and now. You know, Phoenix doesn't touch Tucson in in Street Fighter Four or you know Cross Tekken. I mean, the only thing that's that's mm -hmm. still over there, as far as the bigger games go, is like, is just Marvel. Okay. So, but but yeah, um, those are. I mean, I really only play. I don't really play Marvel. I I uh, used to play it for. Might play it again when Ultra comes back out. Have no idea. I mean, it all depends on what what happens with the game or when it's released or what. So, but right now, my love is uh, Cross Tekken. Such a such an amazing game. So. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay. Um, so that's a pretty g g adequate introduction, I think, for our co-host here. Uh, another another thing worth noting is that you are the tournament organizer for Cross Tekken and for the Ran Matt season in general for uh, this upcoming season. Oh, yes. It's so. been a pleasure to work with you and T. Dizzle. <laughs> Very cool. So, um, so with that, we'll, we'll go ahead and go into... The agenda for our uh, our show today. So we just talked a little bit about our co-host said 3s um, And speaking of the Ram Bats, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the results that from the tournament yesterday. We ran three okay. games: uh, Marvel versus Capcom 3, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, and Street Fighter 4. Um, after that, we're going to be doing some special on match analysis uh, between uh, of a match between uh, said 3s and Saber. And then okay. after that, we have a player spotlight. Tie. So, Let's go ahead and jump right into it here. Uh, we'll go into the results. Let's see. So, first up on our list is Street Fighter Cross Tekken. So, this one was actually pretty cool to see because of... Ba basically, the standings were completely flipped upside down from last week. Like, there's so many new names up here, and there's also right. <laughs> a big shift in, in first place and second place, which I found to be pretty pretty exciting. The match was really exciting. Um, yeah, um, Cross is in a kind of unfortunate position of being the first game on the on the roster for the the Rambat season. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard for some people to make it out because people are getting out of work, like you know, during Cross Tekken, and so they can make it for AE, but they can't make it for Cross. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then so like for instance, Crazy EX, um, yep. he works some Saturdays and. Uh, here, here in Tucson, and he works at a bank. And he gets out like at one or two or something. So, on the days, on the Saturdays, he doesn't work. I mean, he plays Cross Tech, and he joins. He would, he would love to play Cross, but he just can't make it out for an, an entire season. Sure. So, you know, he he doesn't really focus on it as much. But you see his name in here, and it wasn't in there last week. Uh, Marvin is also in that same position. AIB Kyoku, mm -hmm. uh, he wasn't here last Ranbat because he had to work. Um, Bad Intent is actually a visitor from NorCal. Very cool meeting that guy. Um, he's a really good dude. We've gotten some good matches and stuff. Uh, so he's a new guy on there. Uh, <laughs> Callie Driftwood randomly showed up <laughs> from California, which was incredibly awesome to see him and uh, Velociraptor. Mm -hmm. Missed those guys a lot. Uh, but yeah, he joined randomly and, uh, and got in th the top eight here. King Hippo has been like spotty. Like he came to the first one mm -hmm. and then I can't, I don't think he came to the second one. Because he was sick, I don't remember. I, I really don't remember. But he w he wasn't at one of these because he was sick. So, uh -huh. um, and then I don't think he got on the board for on the top eight board for one of the, the Rambats either. So his name. So yeah, it, it's kind of weird. Uh, no saber. Also, um, he had some personal stuff he was dealing with yesterday, so he didn't get a chance to come see us till afterwards. Right. Right. Uh, so, it's you know the the two mainstays in the. The results are me and and Rockus were the only ones. Oh, also Swoops, he was playing in the online qualifier, right? Um, which was going on at the exact same time that our tournament was. Which yeah, really that was slightly unfortunate. <laughs> Super unfortunate and hilariously, I mean, just coincidental. But mm -hmm. uh, he was unable to show because of that because he was competing. Um, so yeah, there's usually a couple more. It's a pretty decent turnout. You know, we still get about around ten people or so. Uh, every every Rambat, which is, I mean, more than a lot of other 
communities throughout the country. So yeah, I actually um, I would say that our our scene in Arizona is pretty strong with cross tech and like everybody it who is. enters is just is like it's very it's high level play on, on every match that is streamed, and it is yeah. numbers that are pretty much higher than a lot of a lot of different scenes in the nation. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I mean, it, it may be a smaller sh turnout than Marvel or uh, AE, but you know what? The people who do show up like the game, love the game, want to play the game, so they're good at the game. You know what I mean? And that's why you get the, the higher quality matches. You don't get the, the random scrubs here or there, you know, who are just maybe casual players or something like that. You know what I mean? They, mm -hmm. These people grind the game, you know, so that's why you get such good matches. And so we had... Uh what was it a nine solid entrance this time around? Which is actually uh, helpful yes. last week, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was. Um, we, we had nine a players. <laughs> yeah, we were missing uh, Saber, Rick Dog, Swoops, and there was one other person. So I mean, we would have had like almost a full bracket, like if those guys had all shown up, like they have been all season. So mm -hmm. it was and unfortunate like, yeah, that they four four tournaments into this season, I've noticed that um, by far this this game is probably the most consistent core group of players. Um, right. There, there are about eight that, maybe maybe six or seven that really show up to every single one of them. So, it's a, uh, even though, even though it's a lower number, on on a, on a on a value scale, like it's, it's a way, way consistent, and that's really cool to see. Yeah. Less fluctuation than any other game. No, it's cool. I mean, I enjoy playing with the the core group guys who who enjoy playing this game here in in Arizona. It's fun. Cool. So moving right along, uh, our next game was uh, Street Fighter Four. <clears throat> and so we had some special guests come for for Street Fighter Four as well. Surprisingly, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, Driftwood and Cali 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 Raptor apparently is his name in here, but it's Velociraptor. For <laughs> yeah, they who, showed up dressed you know. up like Californians. I think they they wore like swimming suits and put sunscreen on their noses sunscreen and stuff. On their noses. They walked in with a California beach towel, and yeah, they were yeah, they were. Yeah. <laughs> we missed those guys. For people who don't know, they're from Tucson. Uh, they learned to play Street Fighter Four with us, um, and they. Ended up, you know, life events took them over to California, and they have, you know, leveled themselves up, you know, since then accordingly with those with those players over there, and uh, you know, kudos to them that they could come over here and and uh, and spend some time with us and hang out with us and you know uh, maybe give us a little competition. It was uh, it was fun to see those guys. It really was. Definitely. Um, so um, I do want to say real quick, yeah. uh, shout outs to Daryl, this oh, dude, yes. Tucson player, and. Uh, I honestly, um, I mean, from my my perspective, I'm mostly playing cross Tekken, mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know what's going on at Arcade in a Box so much with Street Fighter Four nowadays. Um, but Daryl spent a lot of time recently in Japan, like several months. Um, <laughs> he was for in life Japan. Stuff. Okay, I thought he was like yeah, a, for, on the East Coast or something. He was in Japan. No, no, no. That's where he lives. He lives in New York, but he was in Japan for a while. I don't know how long exactly, and I don't even know if he even got to go to an arcade, but. He he re recently returned to us in in Tucson, and uh, okay. I mean he's he he had he had improved you know what I mean and he was never really bad like even when he played with us before I mean he was still good a good player uh, but yesterday he was just on something else man um, <laughs> he was he was doing really really well uh, he almost beat uh, Velociraptor in losers finals um, I do remember I think that. he went up like three games straight. That was a double jeopardy time. situation. Yeah, right? that was a so. double jeopardy situation. So Velociraptor kind of lucked out on that one because <laughs> if it wasn't double jeopardy, Daryl would have taken that. Um, and yet, yeah, uh, Velociraptor ended up coming up, coming back, and, and winning it after that. But, but yeah, no, uh, that, it was cool to see him him do so well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, the Cali Invaders did end up taking first and second. Uh, <laughs> Our uh, our current standings, at least, Crazy EX was in the lead for the Ram Bat, and he still is the, for the whole season. But he, uh, unfortunately, he didn't perform nearly as high as he usually does. Um, so it's still kind of, it's kind of a scary situation for between Isaac and uh, Crazy EX right now for this next this next Ram Bat. Because oh. I think that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I think that like if if disaster strikes, <laughs> uh, Ernest might actually have some issues taking first place for the whole season well he would have to basically not get any points mm -hmm. um in order to lose like even if if isaac were to take first place uh he would get seven points that would put him at 19 i mean mm -hmm. uh crazy ex would have to not place top eight which i mean 
that would don't be really, yeah disaster. It I would just strike. don't really see it happening. Yeah, I don't. I so don't even either. If, if even if Crazy Ex got you know eighth place or seventh place or whatever, he'd still get one point and he'd still win the season. Yep. So it's pretty much out of reach for for Isaac at, at this point. Uh, he I think he just got a promotion or something. I can't remember. So he was uh, he he basically has to work like every Saturday now. I think, and so oh, I'm not sure. Okay. You know how, how he'll be able to to get to this next one, but I guess we'll find out. Okay. So moving right along to the Marvel standings. Uh, yesterday, uh, we saw the return of Forward, who uh, has been absent from the past couple of Ran Bats and been kind of in a team crisis. So he he popped back up at third place with a brand new Mora Doom team. Yeah, he told me he started that new team. Yeah, it's it, he was uh, pleasantly surprised with how well he did. Um, I don't think he he didn't expect to get third. I think he expected to get top eight, but not all the way up to third like that. So good on him. Yeah, awesome. Uh, absent is uh, Tubizo, who is third place in our season right now, and uh, he yeah he failed to make top eight, which is a, a little a little saddening because we all love Tubizo. Um, yeah. And uh, a, a surprise was first attack Iron Chef popping up with his Wolverine team. Uh, so he's up on the board now with two points. Um, yeah, good. Uh, kudos to him. I don't. I mean, I don't know him. I know some of the Marvel crew, but uh-huh. but not many. <laughs> he's yeah. He's a he's a gentleman who helps Mark stream and uh, kind of like a co-owner from First Attack. So pretty cool dude. All um, right. And then uh, Angelic took first place with the Firebrand team. So he's pretty much been the most dominant figure for our uh, Ranbat season because he's just won first place in every tournament he's entered. Uh, Wait, I, Armando didn't play his regular team. No, he played Firebrand. Oh, you guys are failing! Come on, you can't let him play his <laughs> not real team and then win. Yeah, he well, he's that's he, not. What that he is do? not the business. Come on, Marvel. He subbed out. He subbed out Firebrand. Or he subbed out Wolverine for Firebrand, and that actually that ate Diego up. And uh, nah. he actually had to switch to Wolverine for one match against Sean. Oh, okay, so, so he cheated. All right, for, word. I get one, it. For one match, but yes, uh, for the most right. Part. Well, that's because I did. I did the same thing in Grand Finals for Cross. I switched to Jin, Alyssa. I love that damn team. I'm just that's a really good team, especially with that color. On information, <laughs> you know. So it 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 was rough. Uh, and so you know, playing against Rockets in Grand Finals, and I was in winners, and I didn't switch. I was like, I'm not gonna switch. I just wanted to have fun, you know. I just wanted to play, you know, just just have fun with the with the match or whatever. And I did. It w- it was fun. I mean, I got raped at the end there. I won the first two, and then Rockets came back and won six straight. So it was like, ugh, oh, yeah, that but was, that was I wasn't really going to switch. Armando <laughs> sold out. Weakness, Armando. <clears throat> uh, so, okay, with that, we'll move on from the standings and go to, uh, let's see, what's our next thing? Okay, match analysis between said 3S and Saber. So this is actually a match between uh, you and Scott. Um, right. So can you give me some uh, perspective on like when this match was and what it's about and everything? Uh, this was at the first Rambat this season. Um, let's see. Basically, Scott had got put into losers by AIB Rockus. Um, he got run over. Um, they really hadn't seen his team yet. It was Yoshi Zhaoyu, and nobody really has, in Phoenix and at least, has really seen Zhaoyu and what she does. So he kind of got run over um, in, that, in that match to get put into losers. Uh, he worked his way through. And he actually played Rockus again, and he beat Rockus. It was it was close, and it came down to the wire. But he did his you know his adaptation thing because he's old and good, <laughs> uh, and so he came out on top. And then he had to play Swoops for third for and losers finals, um, and he beat Swoops barely. And then yeah. And then that was, and then he saw me in in uh, in grand finals, and I was in winners on that side. Um, and so all I needed to do was take take three games from him. So, but being Scott and who he is, it certainly was not easy. Okay. Um, so, a couple things. I know you're watching it on the stream, so there will be a slight delay between right, what we're gonna, talking about and stuff about like that. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I ch- I tried it out with Ernest last time, and uh, it seemed seemed like it was okay. If you see anything you want me to stop or highlight, let me know. Okay. Um, to, for our viewers, check this out. I can actually draw on the screen too, like NFL style. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, so that's if any y- awesome. y'all have anything to point out, le- please let me know. I've got the chat open here too. That's dope. Here we go. So 
so <clears throat> what I got. Anyway, he's oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, you first. Go ahead. Uh, he's running his usual Law Paul team. Um, I play Akuma Nina. Uh, Akuma, I think, is one of the better point characters in the game. Um, Scott hates this match mostly because I can just be really gay and just lame it out <laughs> like the whole time, and he has a pretty rough time getting in. Uh, MH is middle hunter Armando. Uh, he has a really hard time getting in. He has to take humongous risks. At this point in time, in the beginning of the match, all I'm doing is trying to build meter. I, that first gem that I have that's activated, that meter gem. Okay, oh. pause it, would you? Oh, yep. All right, we'll pause. Um, the Sorry. first gem that I get is a uh, meter gem. And to activate it, my opponent has to block any four moves. doesn't matter if it's a fireball or whatever. So it really sucks, and I basically get it every oh. time because Akuma's. It doesn't matter if you're blocking; it doesn't matter to me. I'm gonna throw fireballs at you. Throw fire, fireballs. You block four fireballs. Cool. I have my gem activated, and then I'm building meter faster. And all I really want is that first bar because at that point, uh, most touches will do 400 plus. You know, you don't want to jump at that point for sure because you're you're gonna take half life. This doesn't matter who you are. Um, Scott did something right there in the beginning. He tried to, <clears throat> he has this little weird tricky gimmick thing where he, he'll do low forward and then he'll charge. His charge move for Law is the Shaolin kicks. And he'll charge it and he'll try to get people to flinch and uh -huh. then catch them with it. And I've just seen it too many times, so I just jumped back as soon as I saw it. Um, that one right there. Okay. Yeah, it should you. be coming up. Yeah. Right, I'm, at, I'm on the delay or whatever, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he paused it. I jumped back and I hit him and I got, ended up getting full combo. At this point with Nina in, He's in a really shitty position. He's in the I get charged, and yeah. he's got a gas. He rolled out of it, so uh, you can play it, man. Okay. Uh, so, you know, he, he, it's a guess at that point. I can dash back and grab him if I want, uh, or he has to guess, silly mix up, but he chose to get out. Um, neutral jumping is really good. Okay, I caught him with the low there. And just get bring Nina back in. Neutral jumping is really good uh, in this game, but especially against characters like Law, because uh, yeah. they have their Tekken strings just keep going no matter what, whether you block them or not. He guessed uh, the a reversal punches, there yeah. and ended up paying off. So he brings Paul in. They do a lot of damage. That's, that's Scott's team. It's, it's designed to... Oh, that was an unfortunate situation there. Scott's team is designed to, uh, to just kill you in like two touches. Yep. So um, Akuma Paul is also kind of bad, except I can't sweep basically anywhere if Paul has meter. Because he can if he blocks it... He can reversal EX wall bounce move and take half my life. So oh, I can't, really? Yeah, wow. so I can't do anything. There he, he had to make a move because time was running out, so he jumped and I caught him with the DP. Uh, and now, again, it's just running away. This, this is the Akuma game that, that I play. I, it's really homo. Um, <laughs> it's really rare in this game because it's, it's honestly very hard to run away uh, what's it, effectively. You know, right. you get touched once, especially with Akuma, and you're down on life, and then you can't run away anymore. You know what I mean? It's, so, it's a very unforgiving game in that, yeah, if you mess up, you're going to get punished really, really Oh, no, really this hard. game is super expensive. You know, if you, if you make one mistake, you're probably, you're probably going to die. You know, <laughs> it's a lot like Marvel in that regard, in that sense that it's like once you get touched, um, you're in an sh extremely shitty position, especially yep. if the, the person has a character with a good, like, Mix-up game. Like, uh, both of my characters actually have really good mix-up game. Akuma's is super decent, uh, but Nina's is retarded. Mm -hmm. So, getting her in on you is really scary. Um, anything that she does leads to at least at least 350. That's, that's like at the very least. Um, but she has stuff that can hit you that, that um, I mean, barring any Pandora combos, I mean, it can do up to like 550 damage. So, they, they really hurt. But uh, you can go ahead and play it. Okay, cool. Um, um for for I'm gonna just leave the the match playing for from here on out. If you want me to pause anything, just let me know. But for time's we'll sake, yeah, because I know this, this is actually a very very long set in that it's yeah <laughs> down the wire. So right. Um, but no. So again, it this is just my whole game. Uh, just do my best to to keep him out and to keep him away from me. Again, I already have a meter. Yeah, Scott was just like giving stuff away here in the beginning, just guessing, making really trying to make reads. Like he he has to take chances with this with this team, against my team. Mm -hmm. um, that was, he missed the flip kick. I, I timed the jump so that he would miss it, um, and then I just chipped him out. So, uh, again, it, it's super frustrating for, for Scott, especially the first two characters that are in there, Law and Akuma. I mean, Akuma just 
he is so it's so tough for him to get in. This yeah. is where in the beginning of the round, um, I'm already at advantage because you have to you have to come to me. I'm just gonna chuck fireballs, yep. but I'm not as scary right now. So I'm a little see there. My gem just activated, right. which is all I did. I didn't care what happened. I just walked up and just did a move. I did my my move that hits twice, and I threw a fireball. That's three hits. So it got my my thing in in there already. Okay, I missed my overhead. But yeah, in the beginning, you're you're at a, a serious disadvantage right from the start. Again, that was kind of that move is is hard to explain. It ground bounces. Only when it's a crouching counter hit, the unless cutter? it's an EX, and it ground bounces no matter what. But oh, okay, it just happened to ground bounce there because he hit a move. It, that was really shitty for Scott that that happened like that. <laughs> but again, I try not to take as many chances and risks with Akuma until okay, that was really good, but he missed the punish afterwards on the junkyard. I try not to take too many risks with Akuma until I have a bar, because at that point it's like well. Uh, you know, I can play my fireball game a little bit better because my DP is scarier because then Nina comes in and kills you. Yeah. Um, I have my defense gem activated here, which is always nice. I'll always do, like, a lot more crap with Akuma if I have my defense gem. It's plus, it's 20% damage reduction. That's actually, and that's really important for Akuma. Like. <laughs> oh, it, it's, it, especially for Akuma. So right. it, it gives him, you figure, on average, at least another 50 points of life, you know, if even if, if he gets hit by a combo. Um, so he, at this point, is like, instead of being a Three, uh, 850 life character, he's a uh, 900 life character, which is hilarious. <laughs> because his, his really only weakness is the fact that he has low life. Scott needed to take a risk, so he did his EX move right Sorry. there. I should have I should have blocked, but I didn't. Um, uh -huh. I was doing... Oh, your thing. Yeah, I, I had to turn Facebook oh, off. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I, I should have blocked, but I, I didn't at this point, though. I'm, I'm up one game, and I'm in winner's side, so I'm going to take a little bit more risk sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, right there, like that should have been the end of the game when I jumped at him, um, but he he didn't DP me for whatever reason. So uh, I think this was that. Yeah, that was a weird exchange where he did the mortar punch. It was that overhead looking punch, and like I went to neutral jump it, but he flipped out of it when I hit him. I guess I didn't. I did hit see him that. Him. Yeah, and then he yeah he went and so she was like crouch forward or something. Yeah, and and actually yeah that was an unsafe junkyard, which is why I hit him. Um, I've played Scott so much, like I just know, <laughs> yeah, he hit me with that. I, I just know exactly like everything that's negative and what I can do against and stuff. So at this point with Paul with no meter, this is like free. Like he can't do anything. So I just do, yeah, yeah. I just do whatever I want. That was, that's an awful situation for Paul. So being in there with Akuma. So yeah, he's he, got his, his little life there. Uh, but again, he still has no meter. Uh, I'm sorry, he had a little bit of meter. Now he has one bar. Um, so now he can do something. Again, look at you. He touches me once. Look at just my life just goes bye bye. Yep. You know, so that's that's one thing that like you have to be careful with. So uh, Akuma, you you any like two hitting move is normally safe to tag someone in off of. So that's how I just got him in right there. Um, it comes out so fast; it's really hard to react to. And if he alpha counters at the wrong time, my incoming character will hit him. Um, so that was just me taking a shot. Oh, uh, I hadn't Punishing done it yet. <laughs> yeah, this team is an incredibly versatile yet, so. team. Yeah, and he got caught by the weird Nina jump in. Nina's jump ins are hella deceiving. Um, mm -hmm. Like the okay, he just gave away that match with Pandora, but yep. Yep. He, he still could have won. <laughs> I I don't like that he did that. Like it just seemed like he was like whatever about it. He had twenty seconds, and he still was alive. He had a bar. There was no reason for him to do it like at all. So, but he just gave that one away. But. Uh, but no, he got Nina's jump ins. Like they look like they're absolutely going to be a cross up, and you oh, hit the wrong, you hit the right fears. button, oh. yeah, and <laughs> yep. it hits in the front. So that's um, why he got how he got hit a bit uh, originally. Real quick, would you mind but, refreshing your stream so that way we can catch up on the delay slightly? Oh yeah, hold up. That just tends to happen over time. But no worries. Uh, let's see. I didn't know I was that far behind. No, not not too far behind, but I, I thought oh, I would okay. just preemptively strike that. <laughs> All right, looks like I'm good. Okay, cool. All right, so I'll go ahead and turn um, the video back up. Now I know how it goes from here, so <laughs> uh, I'll. <explain laughs> oh, achievement that. unlocked. As Sorry. it goes, what did, what did we get? Time for some fireworks. I have no idea what that means. That's, um. So yeah, I, I know how it goes from here. Uh, this was the the third game, and I was on top two zero. Um, ugh, you can't really punish Akuma's like. Fireball. It's it's a weird game. Like that's what I'm. That's why I, I neutral jump a lot with him too. Is because it's like a whole nother fireball game, except in the air. 
So it's like I'm jumping and they think I'm going to air fireball, so they try to jump over it. Yeah. And I just DP them because it recovers in time. Other times they try to approach it from the ground and get underneath it. But if I throw the fireball low enough and at the right time, the fireball hits them before I get the ground. I have like no hurt box on myself, um, on my body. So okay. the fireball hits them and then I get full combo. His, his standing roundhouse is so, it reaches so far. Yeah, it's so a really good You get hit by it and even though you're reeling back, I just hit roundhouse and then it's full combo. Yep. Like with not much scaling on it. So it's, it's hilarious. At this point, Scott's trying to, oh my god. That EX skull splitter is hilarious. It's it ground bounces for no reason. I, yeah. I don't know why that <laughs> is like that. It's it's silly. Um, there, I thought I had a safe jump set up, but I guess I mistimed it. So he got his shredder kicks um, pretty even at this point. Overhead is is minus. So again, it, it sucks for Law because he has no reliable way of going high and opening people up uh, without taking a risk. Uh -huh. So if I block the overhead, I get instant full combo. It's a punish then. It's it's a, like super negative, or I, or I thought it was. Just it's like... it's minus four, three or four. Okay. I I can't remember. So at this point, yeah, Paul has a silly mix up in the corner, like basically uh, off of his bread and butter, which makes it really good. Uh -huh. Where you know he does his little command dash backwards, and then he can just jump at you, and depending on the button he presses, it'll hit in front or back. Uh -huh. And that's the silly thing about it. After you guess which side you have to block, then you have to guess which side they're going to fall on. And so yeah, it's, that seems to be very common in this game, particularly yeah, in the corner. Yeah, it's super weird and scary, and I mean, it's a it's a love hate thing, like with the <laughs> game. You know what I mean? Like when you're doing it to someone, it's like yeah, but then someone does it to you, and you're like, this is fucking gay. You know? <laughs> it's, so, a, it's a it's it's left right kind of thing. right right. Yeah, just... So it's it, it all depends, and I mean, a lot of a lot of characters have it. You know, you just have to find which normal it works with or whatever. So mm -hmm. there's a oh uh, Akuma's. Stint close roundhouse catches back dashes. Yeah, you can normally get full, full combo. So, but uh, it's a it's a love hate thing, and I mean, it it's rough. Okay, that was like a fake fireball thing. I threw it behind him, and he thought it was gonna he thought he was gonna be in block stun, and then I walked up and threw him. Uh, that I get by the way from Rockus and other like a real Akuma players. <laughs> I stole that from them from like Street Fighter Four and from Third Strike and stuff. Oh, That's there awesome. was a jump in I was telling you about. Uh, it's just it that jump in is dirty. It's super dirty. Yep. So the setup uh, is off of like a a throw. Basically, I do a command dash forward, and if I think you're gonna um, if I think you're gonna roll, I sat stand there and throw you and put you right back into the same situation. Uh, if I think you're not gonna throw, uh, then I just do my setup, and you have to guess which side the the thing's gonna hit on. Uh, <laughs> Also, Paul's that demolition man combo between the second and third hit. Uh, it's you can stick a jab in there. Oh, nice! So I didn't know that's that. what I did. That's how I got the win right there. Um, but he can also stop it. Like if he thinks you're going to do something, he can just do the first and second hits. So again, Scott taking a risk. I shouldn't have walked up and done that. Um, all that life, just goodbye. So and then here is where the the game turned. I did DP and then I had this set up here. And I knew exactly how it was going to go. I knew he was going to reversal. So this is a Pandora combo that would have killed him uh, for absolute certainty. And I missed it. And it was shitty. Yeah. That's it <laughs> so he pandora in response because... That was... It was going to be so awesome, man. It was the third game I would have won. I wouldn't have even lost a game to him. <laughs> I, I was going to finish it with Pandora. It was going to be amazing. And then I messed <laughs> it up because I'm... Yay. So... So this is he a big momentum this, shift at this point. No, it right? was. He took this one game, and in my head, like, I mean, I was pissed. I was freaking pissed, like, <laughs> at, at myself. Like, I mean, it's not like, oh, I'm broken down, and I'm, you know, I'm worried or anything. But I was mad. So this game, you can kind of see how it flows. And uh, I was, I was, yeah, that was really stupid. I was just doing really, really dumb crap. You're just being very and, reckless at that point. Yeah, you're like, Man, and I, 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 again, I had a game to work with. And I just was like, I just had to get it out of my system at this mm -hmm. point. I was like, whatever. Like, that was, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about it basically this whole time. Yeah, he just hit me again. That was stupid. Um, so this goes really fast, actually, this match. Mm -hmm. It actually goes really fast. <laughs> uh, because, like I said, I was just trying to get my mind around what had just happened. Because I never miss that combo. It's not hard. You know, it's, it's weird timing off of the, the Pandora or whatever, but it's not hard. Okay. And... Uh, so, you know, Scott was, you know, was taking advantage. He was, being, he was being clutch, and he was being Scott, and he was just like, okay, I know this dude is kind of messed up right now, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in at him, you know, and, and try to mess him up. So 
that was see my brain just totally wasn't in the game. The launcher. I did not mean to do the launch. <laughs> yeah. I did, absolutely did not mean to do launch. I don't know why that came out at all. <laughs> died here? No. Yeah, I died right there. Okay. Yep. That was quick. Which yeah, this game can, was... can go fast. It can be slow. People are like, oh, timeouts or whatever. And it's like, you know what? Most of the time, there's no timeouts. I just happen to play a team that like is gonna try and lame you. You know, I, I happen to play a character like that. But my matches are really polarizing. It, I can do timeouts, or if, I mean, if Nina gets to work, I mean, I can kill you in two hits. So, but in this one, Rockets came over to me, and I mean, the dude is like, I, I, I've said it before, and it, it sounds so gay, but uh, I mean, the dude's voice just like when he talks to me about the game or whatever, he just gets into my head and uh -huh. just lets me know, yo, man, calm the hell down. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yo, I'm I'm right here. The support is crazy. It, like, yeah, I've learned that, and I've kind of tried to instill that in my in my guys in Tucson, which is why I think we're so close. The support really helps. You may not know a lot about the damn game, you know, but it's it's the psychological. I'm more of a psychological coach than anything. You know, I I get their their heads to stop going nuts, and he does the same thing for me, you know. And so he was like, and you know, he does it in his own way. He was like, all right, man. I don't want to be here for a whole nother set. So <laughs> we have to win this so we can go play some casuals. And, you know, he was talking to me and stuff and just yeah, getting in yeah. my ear. So then I get back to, as you can see, just being lame and homo. So I'm sitting there <laughs> on fireballs and he can't do anything all over again. I have the life deficit. So, uh, I mean, it, it's definitely in his favor. I just messed up that combo. I just want to get Akuma out. Um, I tried to go for a take a shot at the overhead. Scott blocked it, you know. So at at this point, it's pretty even. I don't have a bar, so it's kind of scary. That was punished. I don't know why he didn't punish my my uh, chain boost chain right there. Mm. He should have. I don't know what happened. So here Paul's in, and this is super freaking scary. Oh so yeah, I have Paul's no got bar. Quarter, I have my yeah. defense gym, but I have no bar. There, I finally got him out. But I'm still down, and I only have 10 seconds left. So mm -hmm. it's it's really rough. But I think he did something dumb. Yeah. He did. <laughs> he jumped at you. <laughs> yeah, he jumped at me. Okay. okay oh, okay. man. And then that basically, like, took it, like, because he jumped at me. And was like, what are you doing? And I mean, so, like, in that situation, you want to run away, run away, run away, but you don't want to just give up all your space. So every now and then you'll take a shot at someone, mm -hmm. and he did. And I just happened to be ready for it, and I, I took that round. And that kind of swung it back my way, and I was feeling good again. And uh, so, yeah, then the rest is just how it is here. And, uh... Again, just playing the lame game. Oh, that was a really good jump in. Um, it his Akuma's uh, DP doesn't have a whole lot of horizontal range, so if you, yeah, he tried the DP. Yeah, I was just a bad jump. So if you try it, so if someone does an empty jump from the right range, uh, it'll just whiff. It'll go right by him. You know, you won't hit a limb that's being stuck out or whatever. So um, he had a nice auto correct DP. Uh, I was just trying to get out of the corner at the time because I didn't want to be there. You don't want to be there with Paul. You really don't. Uh, but he he hit it. I mean, he did he did really well and, and hit that, and so it's uh, took us to the to the third the third round. Yep. Uh, again, I'm in a pretty good position with the amount of bar that I have, and I'm just building more with my my gem. Yeah, he had to take a jump, and uh, so it gets back to this. I want to bring Akuma back in just because this matchup sucks for Law. Uh -huh. So um, I, I at this at this point it's one touch death. He he managed to get his other character in. It's it's not hard with with Law and his uh, Shaolin kicks. But now he's got Paul so, in with like no bar and <laughs> right. He's he's about to build one. That's what he's, yeah, that's what he's trying to do right there. Is he just wants to get that one bar? Mm -hmm. But now it's like okay, I'm I'm not gonna. I, I don't I don't believe I'm sweeping because I know that it's coming and I know he's looking for it. Uh -huh. So I stopped sweeping altogether. Yeah, he and would I'm like walk up and crouch, walk up yeah. and crouch. He's just like I want and the then sweep. He, yeah, he took a. You can see him waiting for it too. And he uh -huh. took a shot with a mortar punch, and I happened to neutral jump it. That was a setup I did, but he rolled out of it. Um, it's actually a really dirty setup if you don't roll. So at this <laughs> point, okay, at this point I just wanted to get out. That was a, I, I actually made a really good jump there. I thought he was going to mortar punch, so I just jumped out of it. And now he has to follow me back across the screen. I think he meant to. I swept there and wasn't paying attention. Uh -huh. And I think he meant to mortar punch it or uh, Phoenix smasher it and do his combo, but he messed it up. So he got the knee now, yeah. So now it's just a runaway game that's impossible for him to. Even if he touched me right now, it was impo it's impossible for him to win. Um, Assuming that I can get my other character in, I guess. But yeah, then he just gave it up after that. He was like, whatever. So it's really frustrating for him. I mean, he's told me uh, on on plenty of occasions like how, how frustrating it is because that's that team's weakness mm -hmm. is just getting around people, getting around fireballs, getting around spacing and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's really being, rough. Um, I do remember him and, being very frustrated afterwards too. Like he it, he just took yeah. that loss pretty hard because it was it, it was a very very close match. 
in the no, it was. Thing. Man. He had a shot at coming back, like, after I messed that up, but after I messed up that Pandora. But, uh, I mean, I just had to I just had to wrap my mind and get it together. And, and uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I think that's one of the things I've gained over the years as far as tournaments go and experience goes is just, like, I mean, you got to have a short memory, you know, and you just got to be able to to shake crap like that off mm-hmm. and just, just chalk it up to just, okay, that was stupid, now let's move on. Yep. You know, I mean, I, I hadn't lost. I was still in it. You know, you can't get too. I was still in. I was still in winners. You know what I mean. Yep. So you can't. Get, there was no reason for me to get too down on myself. I just. I was just pissed that it that I missed because I never miss it. So it was just. <laughs> it was aggravating when that happened. But definitely, and that yeah, yeah. It, a lot of it has to do with just calming yourself as a player and making sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so that that concludes our uh, match analysis for cross yeah, in there. Yeah. Unset. Shout outs to to Scott. It's always it's always a pleasure playing him playing him and. Uh, you know, my I have to. You know, I, he's one of the people I have to think against most. You know what I mean? So I mean, he really makes me rack my brain, especially since we we have tons of experience against each other. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, I'm pretty sure he's going to do this right now. And you know what I mean? So okay. So well, during the match analysis, then we talked to, we talked about like you know you need, you needed to cool yourself down, and one of the right. the main factors for cooling yourself down was your uh, your corner. Basically, you had you had Rock there to to help you out. So yeah. with that, we're going to go into our player spotlight. Um, and the player happens to be Mr. Rockus. So yeah, <laughs> um, Rock. Yeah, the picture's tight. Yeah, I stole that from his Facebook. We actually, yeah. I, I have, we, I didn't, haven't talked to him since yesterday, so I don't think he actually knows that this is happening. So I apologize <laughs> in advance if, if, uh, if he he comes and sees this picture and realizes that we took it from his Facebook. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, um, he. Yeah, I'm sure he'll. Love it. I'll, I'll I'll tell him that it's uh that it that it's on. I'm sure he'd he'd love to see it. So sure thing. Okay, so Rock is an OG as well. He's been active since uh, 2003. Um, mm-hmm. He's associated with Arcade in a Box. He lives in Tucson, and he's he plays like a, a myriad of different games. Um, I, well, I he plays everything pretty much. Yeah, yeah like so I I wrote down a couple of things that I personally have seen him play and place very highly in. Like Cross Tekken is a big one. Um, Street Fighter. I saw him play um uh, in a Third Strike tournament against uh, oh no Ty. he's a extremely yeah. good third strike player and that that's pretty nuts um uh, yeah. his ibuki in street fighter 4 is I, I i haven't seen a better one besides maybe sako uh he plays on a hitbox and everything and he's got all the like yeah. the one frame links down oh um, yeah and he well, the one thing i know i know about rock is that he plays so many different characters and he picks them up so quickly like oh no he's he's very smart and he he understands the games that's uh-huh. which is why I think he's able to pick up any character he wants to is because he just breaks it down in his in his brain and he just knows how it works you know and I mean the newer games now are much more transparent as opposed to some of the older ones you okay. know what I mean they're much more simplistic but he just is he's so good at just understanding an engine and how it works and why something is the way that it is and you know he comes up with ideas in his head during the day like oh man I could probably do this, you know, and then he goes home and, you know, and does it, and he's like, "Yeah, I was right. I can do this." And then, he, <laughs> you know, it's it, and he comes up with with new stuff, and you know, makes characters who maybe don't even seem all that good. He he makes them he makes them very good, you know. I remember in Third Strike, he was still he was playing Akuma before Kuroda played, and there was a big there was a big point in which I think it was at it was at SBO or it was before. It was one of the SBOs where. Kuroda played Akuma, and he just waxed everybody. I mean, it is Kuroda, <laughs> yeah. but like there was a lot of stuff going on that people didn't know you could do with Akuma, and Rock had already been doing like some of that stuff like on his own, like before it got shown. So, f- and, so for the uh, viewers, could you explain like who Kuroda is? Oh, I'm sorry. No uh, Kuroda is like the undisputed greatest third strike player in the world, hands down, no contest. Um, the guy would take. I mean, he could take any character. Yep. There, there, he has DVDs that he released of him playing like random characters, and so he played like, for instance, he had one with like Yurian, Zabuki, Makoto, uh, freaking Sean, Oro. <laughs> um, I think it was a Hugo one, and these DVDs are basically him footage of him raping. Uh, the, like the the biggest name players in the world at at third strike with whatever character it was. I mean, like sixty game win streaks against 
I mean, any big name that you can think of in, in, in Third Strike as far as like RX and uh, Nuki and MOV. And mm -hmm. I mean, he's just destroying them with these characters. I mean, even, even matches that were awful like Sean Chun or something like that. I mean, he's just destroying these people. And uh, so that's who Kuroda is. He's like the, the Third Strike so player. He's, in the he's basically good at breaking down characters. And then, uh, at, at, like, and particularly in Third Strike, he was good at breaking down any character and then applying them to the matchups. Kind of like Rock, basically. Right, yeah, exactly. Where Rock and, and Rock even yeah. discovered Akuma before Kuroda, then in that sense, right? And, and, I mean, there was stuff that that Rock did learn from from Kuroda for sure. sure. Uh, <laughs> he told me this story one night. There was this hilarious. It, it was something that I, I don't know. I don't. Even, sometimes I wonder, like, man, how do people find some of this crap out? You uh -huh. know what I mean? Like, I mean, I have my ways of training or studying or learning, but some of it, it's like, what the fuck? How did you ever think to do that? You know. <laughs> And there was this one, it, it was, it's a particular uh, third strike combo, and I wish I could just look up the video and show it to you, but basically if you hit someone air-to-air -air in third strike with uh, Akuma hurricane kick, you get one hit, and then you do, I think it's medium hurricane afterwards, and it juggles them in the air, and you get two hits, and then you can super jump straight up and do, and like, it's almost like a super jump cancel straight up and do the hurricane. So he goes flying in the air, and he hits him like three more times. So it's like one, juggle, one, two, and then do the super jump, one, two, three. Oh, that, and looks, it was, that sounds kind of cool looking. <laughs> it was hilarious. Rock told me when he saw that, it was like at two in the morning, and he like screamed and like woke up his, his parents or something like that. <laughs> this was years ago. But yeah, he, he, he yelled so loud because it was amazing. It was like hilariously amazing. It did so much damage. It built so much meter. So it's it's hard to like put you guys in that perspective as to why it was so cool at the time, but it, it was amazing. And he 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 told me about this story, and I just I laughed so hard, man. He said, "Yeah, I woke up my parents, and they were like, what is going on? <laughs> there's a fire? No, there's a hurricane.' No, 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 we're good. <laughs> yeah, it was just oh, an awesome man. combo. So that's and yeah, that's but, so that's a testament to how passionate he can get about this. Oh these no, kind of yeah, fighting games, right? that's and I think that's where he and I like kind of connect in that in that regard we we're both like the same in in that sense or whatever and as to how how passionate we are and you know we're, i mean we 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 get loud that's just what we do you know that that's how it's that's how it's always been it's nothing that we're trying to do it's just it's just who we are mm. you know what i mean and but, that's actually uh, one, of, one of the quotes that i have here or rather i was trying to find a quote for him um and then i i, I could only think of one solid quote and it's right, mirror, mirror, mirror. Yeah, mirror, mirror. Yeah, that <laughs> actually came from for people who don't know. Uh, it was that one year in soccer. I don't know if it's like that every year or what, but were those annoying ass the instruments, Vu 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 or whatever? Yeah, yeah. So, so whatever the hell they're called. And that's you know he was imitating that mirror, 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 mirror. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so that's kind of how that that came about or whatever. And yeah, I mean he's got he's got plenty, but that one's more recently like one of his. One of his best quotes. But, yeah, he still uh, shouts that in, in tournaments too. Like, oh yeah, like I mean, we we all ran that season. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So, um, as far as like games he's played, uh, he was he was pretty like godlike at CBS too. Like, I, I wish I had played that game with him. Um, I didn't really get into it much, oh. sadly. I loved watching it. I mean, probably one of my favorite games to watch. Uh, he in particular was one of my favorite players to watch in that game. Him, uh, Combo Fiend. Um, and then some Jap players were, like, amazing at that game. Um, and he, he got second place at Devastation 2008. I think the only person he lost to was Amir. Um, for those of you who don't, who don't know, he's basically a... He used to be a huge figurehead in the, in the community. He was, like, at one point, probably the best third-strike player in the country. Um, but he also played games like Marvel 2 and CVS 2 and stuff like that. And he was, he was really good at those games, too. So, um, on, a, on a personal note, this dude is, like one of the better guys I know like in my life. He's he's a great dude. He's one of my one of my better friends, one of my older friends. Um I know we spend a lot of our time talking about uh fighting games and stuff, he and I. But the dude has been there like for me, like, you know, when I've had, you know, personal issues and stuff and he's he's just a great dude, a great person to be around, a great friend to have. Um and uh certainly a great training partner for me. I mean I can't tell you <laughs> The, the amount of experience I've gotten character-wise as far as uh, cross teching goes because the guy plays practically the whole, the whole freaking cast. Yeah, uh, I, ran out of, I ran out of space to write how many characters he plays. Oh, yeah. No, you <laughs> would have to have like three pages of the characters that, that he plays in, in the games because uh, he, he's, always, he's always up for learning more you know, uh, about the game 
and uh, discovering new stuff and discovering characters and and uh, how the game works and how the characters work and 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 stretching them. You know, figuring out you know what can I do with this character? How can I how can I make this character better? You know, how can I compete with this character? And he's good at it. He is he's very very good at it. And uh, I mean I we're lucky to have him in Tucson. I know the guy. It's it's so hard. It was it's weird because. You know, this year in particular, um, a couple of tournaments I went to without him. Like, unfortunately, he couldn't make it to Evo. You know, he had some, I think, I don't know if it was money or I don't remember. Okay. But he couldn't make it. Uh, that sucked. But uh, also at uh, UFGT, um, I mean, I kind of went to that tournament in Chicago on, on a whim. Uh-huh. And uh, he wasn't able to come with. And so it, it kind of sucks. I'm, I'm so used to having him in my ear, you know what I mean, and telling me, you know, giving me strategy or telling me to calm the hell down or, or whatever the case may be. And uh, it, it's, it was really night and day. I really had to learn to do it without him. Um, at UFGT, I just, I just totally failed it. I really did. I, I, I lost to Flash Metroid, who was absolutely <laughs> off at Cross Tech. He's <laughs> off. And, uh, and I, I lost to him. And when I shouldn't have, and then I lost to some other random dude just because I was, I don't know. I mean, I just my mind just wasn't there or whatever. And so that was really like a, a really big wake up call for me, and and it was really rough. Um, at Evo, however, I I managed to to do a little bit better. Um, I think I got like 17th overall. I I can't remember, but I I I had a good run. You know what I mean? And uh, I had a lot of good support you know, behind me. I mean, there was a lot of the Tucson guys behind me, uh, Scott and Rick and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but it's, it's a big, it's a big deal to have someone in your corner, whether it's just one person or a group, it doesn't matter. Um, and that's, that's one of the things that I've learned and it, it really does help you. I mean, more than you think it does, it, it helps you and it can help you. Um, and I've just been fortunate enough to have this guy in my corner for, for as long as I have. I mean, I know, like I said, he's helped me straighten out my mind a million times. Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, it's just, it's an aspect that people don't really think about too much as far as, I, I know it's come up more and more, the whole coaching aspect thing. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, it's still something that's not really, I don't think people look at enough and say, oh, you know what? Yeah, this, this does make sense that this person is, is able to help this, this player, uh, while they're playing, keep their head level, give them strategy, see another uh, angle of the game that maybe this person didn't think about because they're playing. You know, you step back and you, you look at it from a different angle uh, as, a, as a spectator as opposed to a competitor. I mean, you're going to see something different, you know. So to be able to sit there and suggest, oh, you know, this, this, and that. And it, like I said, it might not any, be anything specific. It could be just like, yo, man, he's trying to hit you with such and such move. Like, you know, just you got to watch out for that. He keeps trying to throw it out there. He's throwing out yep. there recklessly. You know, hit him for it. You know what I mean? And then, you know, it's up to the player to make that adjustment, of course. But the fact that you that you pointed that out, they might not have seen that before. You know, their mind may have been on something else. So yeah, I mean, you know, it's there's a mu- there's a bunch of different options that, that your opponent can do, and like you can maybe cover half of them. But if you have somebody else on your corner who's covering the other half for you, that's awesome. Oh yeah, I mean, on this show we've we've covered we've covered uh, like relationships between players as far as like rivalries are concerned, and we've right. talked about um, uh, we've <laughs> talked about uh, also like reflecting on yourself like with Daigo, but. This is a, another huge facet of, uh, of of being a fighting game player, or just being a competitive player in general, and, and having a coach, and like a kind of a yeah, a coach player mentality or a coach player relationship. And I think Rock exemplifies the. the it's it's interesting because you in particular, uh, I've heard I've heard the nickname Coach Abe so many times. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's really it's really cool to be at least on my end to hear uh, that you have a coach too, <laughs> and that's yeah. that's Rock and. Uh, one thing about him is, uh, amidst all of the rivalries and drama and whatever in our, in our fighting game community, I have not met anybody who has has uh, who has disliked Rock. I've always heard the the number oh. one r- word that I've heard associated with him is cool. Everybody always says, "Yeah, Rock's pretty cool. He's just he's just a cool, stylish dude. <laughs> he always comes <laughs> like dressed up like fancy. He's got the like in this in this hat uh, in, the, in this uh, picture. He's got that hat and everything. Like yeah. he's a cool dude." <laughs> No, you. I. I think you'd be hard pressed to meet a person on the face of the earth who who doesn't like Rock. He's just a good <laughs> overall guy. He gets along with everybody. Uh, he's very warm. Uh, he's very. He's very open with you know with people and and welcoming to them, especially in the particular in the fighting game community. But 
I mean, he's no stranger to people. I mean, he DJs here in town. I mean, a lot of people know who he is. And, uh, I mean, he's just a, a, a beloved dude, you know. And uh, that's, that's not hard to see when you meet him um, because he's just a really, really nice guy. Cool. All right. So that concludes our player spotlight. And I think um, with that, we'll probably end up wrapping up this show. Uh, do you have any final thoughts on uh, the Rambat season or anything like that before we, we sign off? Um, I don't think so. Uh, mostly, I I think that you know the Rambats for the most part have been you know pretty successful. I know that numbers have gone down, but that always happens throughout the mm -hmm. season. Uh, I mean, that's just you know the nature of the game. You know, people get mollywopped that first you know season or that yep. first uh, tournament, and it's like uh, like you know they start to think about it, and so they don't you know they don't show up or whatever. I think yesterday was the first time I've ever seen there were more people for AE than there were for for Marvel. That was yeah, that's that a, that's strange. it's weird. It's been happening. Uh, more and more frequently throughout the throughout the season, and I, I found that to be very very surprising. Uh, not not well not surprising, like pleasantly surprising. I'm very happy that Street Fighter Four has had the had the resurgence that it has uh, that it, that it has had, especially after, um, especially with the new update coming out. I would figure everyone would drop it, <laughs> like until until uh, the Ultra comes out. But people are still playing. No, I I think people want to be ready for Ultra, mm -hmm. um, and I don't think it's going to be like that hard. Like uh, I mean, they are changing a lot of things. You know, I, I think that that's really good about the game. And again, I don't think there's really been anything. There, are, there hasn't been too much that's been officially announced about it. But right. um, I'm sure it's going to be a uh, a good ending to the game. At least I I think it is. You know, I don't know how many more they plan to do <laughs> with this. But yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, this seems like a big one. It seems like push the last push to get this game to get the to squeeze the most out of this game that they can. Mm -hmm. And uh. Uh, I mean, I can't say that I'm looking forward to it, but I can't say that, you know, I, that I am not going to play. I, I have no idea. I've been getting pressure from everyone uh, <laughs> to come back and play again. And, um, you know, with people leaving here in Tucson, you know, it's kind of, there's not a whole lot of, of like, really good competition. You know, I mean, when Tucson, I mean, with John and Nick and Rock and Marvin and me and Isaac and Ernest, I mean we used to just destroy each other like all the time and uh you know oh david also mm -hmm. you know but with all those people leaving david left uh freaking john and nick left um me and rock have kind of fallen into the the cross tekken you know uh wormhole and uh <laughs> marvin is kind of i don't know what's up with marvin like he's, he's in limbo right now I think. yeah he is kind of just like hanging there like he's not really sure what he wants to play and i don't really blame him you know i mean you look at cross and it's like there's not a whole lot of competition, you know. I get it. And you look at AE, and it's like I'm bored because it's been out forever, you know. And then Marvel, I mean, I don't know if he just doesn't like the game. I don't know. I can't speak to that for that. Uh, but so I understand why he's just kind of hanging there. But uh, but yeah, so it kind of sucks for people like Ernest um, and Isaac, uh, and even like people in Phoenix, like Nico and Mike. You know, they've kind of lost their drive as well. Yeah. Uh, just because they they don't have a whole lot of you know. Uh, the competition that that we used to have, and I know that the Tucson Phoenix rivalry always sparked that and always helped us, you know, get better. I mean, I know that was like when I started playing four, it was like, okay, I'm gonna play this game and then get better than Phoenix. That's all I really want to do. <laughs> I do not care about anything else. I'm just sick of hearing them talk. Dan and Scott and Nico, uh, I just I was sick of it, and so and I mean, love that was with respect for sure, but I just didn't want to hear it anymore, and. Uh, so, you know, like I said, we just, it was, it was a mission. Me, Rock, Marvin, I mean, and all the rest of the guys, that was our mission. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's kind of gone by the wayside now just because things change, life happens. That's just how it is. You know, it's nobody's fault. It's just sure. the way that it goes. Uh, but maybe with Ultra, you know, we will see, you know, uh, a resurgence, you know, yeah. in, in that, you know. So, yeah, whatever, Armando. <laughs> <laughs> the Tucson Phoenix rivalry is still, I mean, it's, it, Depending on which game it is, I think it's still pretty solid. Uh, oh no! I mean, there's always there's there's always going to be there. If there's a Tucson player Phoenix, playing against the Phoenix player, yeah. I mean, you'll always hear, you know, people. Oh yeah, Phoenix. Yeah, we gonna take it. You know, blah blah blah. You know that that shit talk. You know, that's just kind of how it goes. <laughs> yeah. um, but as to to how it used to be, and as rough as it used to be, you know, it's it's not it's not like that anymore. Um, as much. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but. 
you know, like I said, I mean, maybe it'll maybe it'll come back again. I I, I have no idea. I guess only time will tell. It is worth noting too that after like. Even though we have the rivalry within the state, as soon as we leave the state, um, everybody is like team. We, we become Team Arizona. Too. Oh yeah, so definitely. Um, it's like this magical thing that just kind of brings us all together, and uh, <laughs> we we just be we just become one. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter what's going on. If I'm at Evo and I'm passing by a Marvel setup, you know, that's playing tournament, and I happen to see you know Armando there, or whoever the case may be, I don't even you know I don't even watch Marvel. I don't even like Marvel. But I'll sit there and I'll be loud, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna cheer for my Arizona people. That's what I'm gonna do. All right. You know. So you know, I I'll I don't know if you guys were told this story, but uh, Arizona. I mean, more so Tucson, but Arizona in general is just like we're we're like the hype machine. You know what I mean? Like uh, basically, <clears throat> there was there was this girl who was playing. It was Street Fighter Four. Was playing against this random dude. And he was just being a he was being a fucking asshole, dude. He was she was French. She spoke no English, nothing. And so this dude she's playing against um, was playing Guile. She was playing Cami. And normally that's a hilarious matchup for Cami. But uh, you know they they were they weren't that good. You know what I mean? I don't know how to say that without being an asshole. But they weren't that good. But the dude was like doing stuff to her, like he was he was beating her, and then he would sit there and taunt her like the whole time. You know oh. he would do something and then taunt, do something and then taunt. And was just kind of like messing around. And it was like, what the fuck? So all of us were all around watching this. And then it, w- it was like, uh, Ernest, Matt, uh, Isaac. Matt. <laughs> uh, um, I can't remember. And like a few other people. And they just started, uh, for the record, I wasn't there. I was just told about this. So I, I'm not, when I say we, I mean like Tucson crew. Um, but basically they started like cheering for her. Like screaming loud, just being, you know, obnoxious fucking Tucson. That's what they were <laughs> And, um, man, she started coming back, you know, <laughs> and she started winning. And, and I mean, like, you got to think of it from this girl's point of view. She flew over to America to play in this tournament. She speaks no English. And this dude, all these people around her who mostly she doesn't know. I don't know if she had any of her friends around or what. I mean, we didn't really know. And this dude is doing this to her. I mean, that's just kind of a shitty thing to do. You know what I mean? Sure. And so they're getting loud and crazy. And, and she's coming back. And, she's, <laughs> and she ends up at the last thing. It was the most clutch. And I, I don't. I don't know if you could really do it again if you meant to. It was it was so weird. I don't know how it happened, but apparently um, he went to jump or something, and it was the last round, last everything, and she happened to grab air grab him like a foot off the ground. Oh dang! And threw him. <laughs> yeah, it was it was weird. I don't know how it happened, and uh, and he she she killed him. He died. He lost. And dude, the, the place like. Because everybody had started to crowd around at that point. Yeah, because you know, it's like, oh, what's going on over right? here? <laughs> yeah, and so she wins, and the, the I mean, the group just exploded and went nuts, and everybody high fived her and congratulated her and stuff, and and that dude was just he just walked off all pissed off, and I was like, that's the kind of crap that you get, man. Stop being a douchebag American, dude. That's just that's just shitty. It's a shitty thing to do, you know. It's like it's it's, it's tournament. You don't have to be a dickhole, you know. Just play the match, man. <laughs> so that guy deserved what he got. But I thought that was a fun. That was a funny story. Is just like it, it honestly doesn't matter who it is. Like even our people in uh, some of our best friends are in California. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you know the ROTB crew with like uh, yeah, Caesar they're... and and uh, Coffee and Vicious and all of them. All those guys. They came for the This Is It tournament. Yep, but I met them there. I mean, we're their cheering group too. I mean, we all follow each other around, and we're always like, "Oh, our matches are over here and over there, whatever." So no. Uh, Cheering sections are a, are a big part of it, especially at majors, mm-hmm. and uh, they certainly help you out, man. You know, you know that your guys are back there, and and uh, you know they want to see you win. You know, so it, it helps for sure. Very cool. All right. Well, so with that, I think we'll we'll close out the show here. I think we we went a little bit over because I know you wanted to head out. We had some time restrictions, so yeah, I'm about to leave for work right now. <laughs> All righty. So thank you very much for joining us, um, and uh, thanks for uh, for co-hosting Abe. Uh, and we'll see you at the next round bat. Yeah, of course, John. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, shout outs to everybody who who watched, and uh, I guess we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks for that that last round at one point five. Let's finish the season and and have a good time, man. Yep. Thanks right. very much. Guys, have a good one. <laughs>